All right, I'm back. Um, I want to do a, sort, a, a short session on f-stops. Um, I thought I covered this, but looking over the videos I did, I couldn't find it. So I think I'm recording this again, but I, I wanted to talk about f-stops and what they mean and how we came about f-stops. And um, it occurred to me that I'm doing these videos um, sporadically. So it's getting a little bit um, confusing to me what I covered and what I didn't cover. I wanted to cover this because um, it's important and um, it's not often talked about. But um, and since we're talking about shooting with a camera, I, I decided to put it in the session, the second session. Um, F, okay, lenses are calibrated by um, when they are focused at infinity. That means that when you take a lens and you focus on a mountain, as far as ways you can see, that distance between the lens and the film, where the film sits, determines the focal length of a lens. So if you focus at uh, a 50 millimeter lens for a 35 millimeter camera, that lens where the image is inverted inside the lens, because the image comes in upside down, um, from that point where it's inverted to where it's focused on the film plane is a distance of 50 millimeters. Most 50 millimeter lenses are going to be somewhere around 50. They're, they're called 50 millimeters, but uh, they might be 49.5 and so forth. Um, that also determines F1. Um, so if you had an aperture that had a 50 millimeter diameter, that would be an F1 lens. And I've only seen one F1 lens in my life. Um, it was for a Leica, very expensive lens, a lot of glass to gather that much light so that 50, a 50 millimeter diameter would allow a lot of light in to be shot in a nightclub, you know, at, with very low light and that's what, that's what it was designed for. Most lenses for a 50 millimeter um, lens, most, most uh, apertures for a 50 millimeter lens, the largest aperture you're gonna find is probably a 1.4. You might find a 1.2, but most likely a 1.4. And that's already considered a very large f-stop. <clears throat> f means fraction. So when you say f uh, 1.4, you're saying one over 1.4. F8 would then would be 1 over 8. That's why F8 is larger than F11, because 1 eighth is a larger value than 1 over 11. So F means fraction. And um, the square root of 2 is 1.414. 1 if we I don't know if you can see this, 2 square root. 1.41421, one. it goes on <laughs> to infinity there. But suffice to say that 1.4 is half the area of uh, an F1.4 at half the area of F1. So 1.4 being the largest f-stop you'll find, if you multiply that times the square root of 2, you get 1.189 which normally is listed as 2 so a 50 millimeter lens will go from 1.4 to f2 um, 2 times 1.414 equals 2.8 so that would be the next opening uh, if we continue Multiplying that times the square root of 2 times 1.414 1 
equals 3.998. So the next step would be F4. You multiply that times 1.414, 5.6, and you'll get 8, 11, 16, 22, 32, yeah, 64, so forth, okay? So that's what F stop means. And um, my father and grandfather had old lenses and a lot of them, some of them, um, had these strange f-stops on, f10 instead of 11. Uh, but, say the, but the next f-stop would still be um, multiplied times the square root of 2. So they used different um, um, sets of f-stops before with older lenses. But the square root of 2, um, would make one half the area of the succeeding f stop. So it's obvious that shutter speeds are done in one half increments. Um, but it, but this is how f stops are uh, broken down by um, increments of one half halving the area of that circular aperture. Okay. Another important thing is the amount of light that comes in through a lens is calibrated by f-stops, which is calibrated when you're focused on infinity. And anytime you don't focus on infinity, um, the elements of the glass, the lenses, move away, um, elongate. The distance between the film plane and the lens and so that changes your exposure a little bit depending on how close you uh, wind up focusing um, I this is especially true for zoom lenses I remember zoom lenses having like I had a 70 to 105 uh, zoom lens in the 70s and it's it was a 3.5 but it was only three point it was an f 3.5 was the largest aperture, but it was only 3.5 when it was when I was using 70 millimeters. And when I zoomed to 105, they had this um, marking that um, showed that when I was zoomed to 105, I had an effective f-stop of only 4.5 or somewhere around there. So your exposure is going to be um, affected by the distance you focus at. And this is especially true when you start doing close-ups. Um, if you're focusing uh, on something that's one inch and you wind up being a half inch on your film plane, uh, you're going to have to need to increase exposure, either by opening the f-stop more or uh, short, um, giving more exposure through uh, the shutter speed. There are these uh, factors, uh, exposure factors, for shooting at one to one. Um, you need to, some, you need to add as much as two stops more exposure when you're doing macro work or more. Um, another thing is reciprocity. Uh, film is designed for a certain amount of, of exposure um, a duration of exposure. So if you're using a daylight film, it might be uh, designed for one second to one uh, thousandth of a second. If you start giving less exposure than a thousandth of a second, it's not as responsive. So you need to increase more exposure when you use such a short shutter speed or when you use a longer shutter speed it's also not going to uh, give you um, the amount of exposure <clears throat> necessary to affect that film so reciprocity failure is another issue um, so between 
the focus distance and the shutter speed that you're using if it's not designed for um, slow shutter speeds and you're using a very slow shutter speed sometimes you need the double exposure just for reciprocity failure so those two aspects um, focal distance and shutter speed affects your exposure uh, depending on what kind of film you're using there are um, there was a film called VPS, Vericolor Professional S for short exposure. It was, it, it's a, it was a wedding film uh, meant for daylight or electronic flash. And then there was VPL, which was Vericolor Professional Long Exposure. And that was designed for studio work where you're using a tenth of a second or even two seconds uh, shooting in the studio when you're shooting still lifes or shooting portraits and those um, were designed for a specific duration of exposure and they both had um, recommendations for reciprocity failure in this regard okay I just wanted to mention that much and add that to the second session Okay. I'm taking a break right now from all these lessons because I have to get back in the dark room. I have some stuff I need to do. Um, but I'll be back to talk uh, more. I, I've noticed that so far I posted these videos about um, oh, maybe a month and a half, six weeks ago, and I'm not getting very many uh, views. Mm -hmm. So it might be that not too many people are interested in. in getting this technical but anyway I'll continue and um, get into the masking portion okay Thank you again.